So starting with uh, Mongoose Traveler 2 GM 102, uh, we are going to be using my GM 101 session from last night. This is the same table that we actually had set up for our session. I just want to make sure you guys could see my mouse moving across the screen, kind of going over the red planet there. Does everybody see that? Yep. All good. Yep. Yep. And I'll do yep. This, yep. I'll do this little pinging sonar thing I got set up when I'm trying to get your guys' attention. It's running really smooth tonight. Last night it was really herky jerky. Yeah, I think it depends on what other uh, resources are being used on the, the server. How'd you do that ping thing? Is that in the rule set or is that something on your display? It's a Windows feature, actually. Uh, control, oh, okay. control for circle. I could get you a screenshot of that setting after the class and post it in there. Oh, sure. Yeah. And a lot of stuff I'll, I'll, I'll refer is in chat. I'll say uh, Discord chat or game chat uh, because nobody's really going to be logged in. It's all going to be in Discord chat when I start sharing some resources. All right. So quick review. And for those experienced, this should be pretty uh, straightforward. But... Uh, the right side of our, our virtual tabletop in Fantasy Grounds, I refer to it as our menu. Uh, then the menu has our buttons uh, all set up. A lot of times you re hear these referred to as banners because in the fantasy versions of, of our games, they look like banners hanging there. Um, down to the left is this area we refer to as a dice stack. Uh, in Mongoose Traveler 2, it has our modifiers, our boon and bane. Our pluses and minuses, and we learned last night that you could stack them and they will counteract each other, right? So that should just be a minus one, right? So that's very cool. Our our um, attribute stack here will override. We we'll, we could use uh, Jose's character here and override a skill check. So he wants to use advocate. We could force the social, and then have him roll it. It'll it'll apply his social bonus to it. Right, and it'll override if he has something else selected. Uh, say he thinks it's it's his uh, education, and I select social. This will override that. So if you're quick as a as a ref, you could hurry up and get that. Uh, we also learned last night that the task difficulties. Uh, this is where the ref will set it, ranging from simple at two all the way to impossible at sixteen, or any even number in between as we click on these buttons. We also learned, if uh, Jose, if you wouldn't mind, that, that the players have agency over this and they could change it as well. Go ahead and make a change on that. All right, so that's I'm not doing that, but you will get the alert in the chat that somebody is changing it. Uh, that that's if your players know know what their task difficulty should be based on a specific uh, uh, skill check role. And if you want to make a custom number uh, as a ref, it's it's at your discretion. If you don't, if the rules don't tell you what it should be, and you think it should be a nine, you can just type in here, and I just set it to a nine. All right, we're gonna do one thing to actually unprep this table because there's I got too much assets loaded, so this is a good spot as a refresher. Remember, nothing is in your game session on your virtual tabletop until you load it into your library right here. Uh, by, by opening library and going to modules uh, is where we're going to load and unload data. Uh, for tonight's class, I'm going to actually teach on how to import images and maps and how to create story items. Um, the, the problem is, is this D66 compendium that we loaded and this adventure also includes images and maps and story items so I'm going to unload them so that way we have less visual conflict and same with the spaceport maps so I just clicked in modules and it opened up this new data module activation we are going to do the reverse we're going to unactivate them I'm going to unload the compendium for tonight alright I'm going to unload the adventure I'm going to unload these citizens because we're going to you know what I'll leave them there because it's going to be a good example on how to duplicate them uh, I'll show you where I got this. We'll share the resources I got the uh, the uh, uh, public publicly curated uh, NPC modules from. Is that generic token swapper? Is that for traveler or is that for other? No, uh, this is um, something I use for my D and D five e. You you guys probably won't have that. If you see anything made by Rob Tui, probably five e. Okay. But it stays in the same folder as, as all of my other modules, so you'll see some extra stuff in there. Uh, if you uh, were to try and draw from it during a Traveler game, would it fail, or would you still be able to? 
Uh, this requires an extension to run on top of it, so this isn't really going to do anything. Uh, this oh, is just, just so you know what it does is for my um, like my druid. I had a I had two druids at a table once, high level, and they polymorphed and shape changed a lot. And this this did it when they cast the spell. It triggered off the chat window when they cast the spell. It would change their token yeah. and they would update the their uh, their character sheet with an NPC sheet. Oh, okay, cool! But yeah, it was it's a cool tool, but no no functionality in Traveler that I'm aware of. I can't think of any reason to to use it. So I'm gonna keep my core. Not too many polymorph spells in uh, in Traveler. Yeah, maybe maybe there's a psionic spell I'm not aware of, but I, I so. But um, I'm gonna keep my core rules loaded. I unloaded High Guard. I'm not gonna use that tonight. I'm gonna keep my central supply catalog so we get look at different items when we start working on custom items. And I did say I was gonna unload uh, that my spaceport. I think that's good. And then one other reminder, if, if, if it's a, a red X, your players, when they connect, will not be able to view this nor load it. If there is a green check mark, that means your players are allowed to load it and they, they will view it when they log in. I think that's going to be set. I'm just going to sanity check. I should have mm -hmm. an empty story. Very good. Well, just uh, uh, G-Rex, just as a heads up, I think you did not unload your space for it. Okay, let me go back. Thank you. Library, modules. You're right. I just saw it. Unload. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. So it'll be less maps created. No worries. Are there sound uh, sound systems for uh, Traveler yet? Hmm. So you, uh, I don't know if you say that because you saw this uh, kind of. This, yeah, I this, saw that. this Sirenscape sound links does kind of work. Um, I do have the the subscription to Sirenscape, and I run the Sci-Fi Desktop um, soundboard. And you can create, uh, you can run stuff through your game that way. Oh. Uh, I do that. It, I, I just, I only really run ambient sounds in the background. So I have like a space station uh, running when my guys are in a high port, and then I have a, uh, you know, ambient spaceship noises when they're actually in space, etc. I like it. Yeah. There are there are classes on how to set up uh, Sirenscape. But uh, that that is a its own two to four hour class. Oof. Okay, and remember we could change what we see in our menu, the buttons by we could trim it down just to GM, the player, right? Create PC. I have it set to all because that's what we're viewing. But you could also customize it by just clicking or or checking and unchecking different areas, and it'll update. But I'm gonna keep everything there, so we can see all our options. All right, so this is going to be a little abstract. I just need you to kind of visualize with me. If you're if you're a computer programmer, have that kind of background, it'll make a little bit more sense to you. So what what we do in Fantasy Grounds, the way data is managed um, as the game flow is, you typically start with a story item, and then you start nesting items or linking items within your story. I like to just say storyboard because it creates a visual of of how things, whether it's linear. Or if you if st different items start branching in different directions, how you can link it together. Uh, so for tonight, what we're going to do is an example. So um, I'm going to bring up this folder here. I have a bunch of um, PDFs that I own for Traveler. Uh, one of them is March's Adventure 2, Mission of Mithril, which is an adventure that I played with my players that was not available for purchase on Fantasy Grounds. Uh, not yet, anyway. So I ended up converting it and importing the assets and the story into my game session, into my campaign. So that's that's how I'm going to teach tonight's class uh, from that point of view. Um, you could you could also do it from the point of view where you just make your homebrew uh, and, and have it saved on, say, Word or Notepad. Or you could actually just kind of freelance and, and make, if you know you're only ever going to use it in Fantasy Grounds, you could, you could create your own adventure directly in Fantasy Grounds in the story. Uh, so get, get just for the frame of reference though tonight I'm using a published PDF document um, but it, it this applies to all kinds of facets on how to get content into your game so just out of curiosity is like the story mode basically set up to do uh, 
either like a straight adventure, like where it's like go to point A, like a train, or could you is it compatible with like more of a sandbox mode? Uh, yeah, it's it's actually good for both. I could I could show you how to use both, and I'll, it'll tie together at the end. Um, you gotta just bear with me as we build the story out. Um, we're we're gonna use different different tools, different menus here on the right, or buttons in the menu on the right, and we're gonna build into our our story. Then I could show you how it, it can follow a linear path, or more of a sandbox. If I play down a uh, a subsector with twenty something planets, and how how it could get sandbox on you. Thanks, Rob. Yep. All right. So, uh, with that in mind, I'm going to bring this back up. Oh, did I close it? I uh, must have. So I know it's uh, desktop and traveler. There it is. So what what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out of this conversion folder. You uh, probably want to have a good way to to store and bin your data on your on your computer for so it's in a central location when you start importing into Fantasy Grounds. Um, what I've already done ahead of time is I converted it uh, to uh, Word because it takes a little bit of time. Uh, you don't have to do that. I'm going to bring up what the adventure looks like in PDF right now. So you opened it as a PDF mm -hmm. and then converted it from the PDF to Word? I did, and I, I should mention not everybody has that function. It, I, I own a, uh, a professional suite of, of uh, Acrobat for work, so I may not have that option. And I'll show you the, the, the reasons why I did it, that you don't have to do it. Um, but we are essentially going to be doing copy and paste. This is what the adventure looks like. It's 41 pages in a PDF. We're not going to get the whole thing in there, but I'm going to just pull different aspects out of here to show you how this is going to get built. I am going to work out of the Word document. Um, and the reason being, so Fantasy Grounds, especially Fantasy Grounds Classic, does not like rich text. It wants plain text. Uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity has an updated uh, database to accept special characters and, and spaces. Uh, it's still not perfect, uh, but the copy and paste method is better out of something where you've stripped the uh, rich text or as much rich, rich text as possible. When we start building a story, I'll show you the difference and why it looks different. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, this is a right. I did pu I did purchase this right from the publisher. And it is protected. If I had it my way, I would strip it all the way down and export it to text, a TXT file. And, and I would work out of that if I could. Uh, but they did protect this document from actually being uh, stripped down to plain text as a text file. Um, this kind of might be oversharing that, but let's keep that in mind. Plain text no, that's, is that's, ideal. That's, that's good information to know. That that's good behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. So if you write your own adventure um, and you do it in Word, save it save it to plain text when you're ready to start importing. There 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 is an extension that that I hear is functional. I've never used it that could that could read a lot of the data in, but you still gotta parse it properly into its story items. So I don't know if it's more work than it's worth. So this is the PDF um, from here. I'm not gonna probably refer to this anymore, except to show you an example of how bad it looks if you copy the text. I'm going to be working out of this uh, Word document, right? And uh, stripped. Ooh, I closed it. All right, converted to Word. It looks very similar. The problem is you guys probably have a hard time reading this text because of the background image, but hopefully when I highlight it, you kind of get the point. So, sure. stuff. So remember, I'll be I'll be flipping back and forth. I'll drag and drop this over to our share screen. And this is uh, how, how we're going to get the text and images into the, our game right from the adventure. And then I'll show you how to do some custom stuff here in a bit. So, um, starting with story, we're going to start building out our adventure. Oh, uh, there were all oh, the licenses. You go ahead and flip it to uncategorized. And now we have um, a blank canvas essentially. Uh, these will get categorized at the very end of the class. What we're going to do is save this adventure. We're going to call it, uh, you know, whatever our adventure name is, uh, Mission in the Mithril. And then everything will get categorized in that adventure. 
uh, and I'll have a name next to it next time we load it, and I guess I'll show that for proof of concept after we're done. So starting off, I did I went to story right here, All right, and uh, it's going to be blank if it's a, if you don't have any adventures or any uh, extra data loaded, and that's why I went ahead and unloaded as much as I could. I'm going to create a new story entry by hitting add item. And I'm going to start, what we want to do is this naming convention. Uh, you're going to want it, it's alphanumeric and good rule of thumb so that the data is, is stored in a logical manner visually is uh, numeric. So I'm going to start at 0, 0.0. All right, and this will be introduction. If you know your story is big enough, but there's enough depth, you may want to go from the tenths position to the thousandths by adding uh, a second position after the decimal. Uh, totally up to you. I know for this class, I'm not going to need it, but uh, you know, once you hit 0 0.9, you're done. That chapter's that chapter's closed unless you go to to thousands. So you do a 0 0.10. But I'm going to start uh, 0, 0, 0 0.0 for this class. I'm, I'm, uh, my mouse is going to the Word document, and I am going to grab the introduction off the Word document. All right, and what I did is I controlled, I highlighted it, I hit Control Copy. You cannot right click in Fantasy Grounds, so the, 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 you have to use your keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to hit Control V. All right, and I just pasted that text in. So already we can see it's a little bit of formatting issue. We have a, a, a break in a paragraph, so you do got to clean up. If you um, flip and paste it into a text, I'm sorry, into like a uh, word pad, and then go from the word pad into Fantasy Grounds, does that prevent the uh, the formatting issues? Uh, we could try that. Um, I, I haven't tried. If you do, like when I do it, in, I, I work out of Notepad Plus Plus when I can. Anyway, I That's do. What I yeah, I do. I do find and replace um, two spaces and replace it with a single space. If you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it takes out these big fat chunks out. You can just like regularly type it in the box, so you don't have to like cut and paste it, right? No. Yeah. Exactly. I could just like uh, so starting from the top. Just for example, I'm, I'm like I said, you don't have to copy and paste. You could create your adventure right here in game or read it side by side. Right, and you could just literally build an adventure in game uh, right at right at your keyboard. Um, I just like showing the copy and paste because that is a lot of people like. I shouldn't say a lot of people, but there's so much content that's not in Fantasy Grounds out there that's not just Mongoose Traveler. You could, you could copy, you could go all the way back to 1977 and find PDF versions of the Black Books and Adventures, and you could get them in your game this way if they're in PDF. That's why I like to show this as an example. But you're right. That's only if you have the full uh, functional version of PDF, right? Mm -hmm. So let me. Um, that's if you. Uh, true and not true. Here's what it's going to look like. Let me create a new item. I'll, I'll copy and paste the PDF so you see what it looks like with the rich text. All right, so this is this is the section I was copying. I'm gonna hit Control V. Way too many spaces. Uh, so if if you're okay with it, it's fine. It is it is functional. Is there a word limit to like what each what each box can hold? If there is, I haven't hit it yet. I I know for a fact uh -huh. uh, a layer rune. He, he does everything out of a single story entry when he runs his games. That way he just scrolls, because he plays linear adventures a lot when he does his homebrew. So you're, you're not limited. You're not The way I'm teaching this is if we're building separate story entries. Uh, but you're, you could do everything in one, if it's, especially if it's a linear format. It would make sense for you as the, as the DM, GM, ref to just scroll and go. 
why did you choose to do it as uncategorized rather than naming your the the homebrew you're making right there? It it'll, it it'll get named when I'm done. I just want to have all my entries in, and then they're going to actually get saved together. Uh, and oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like I keep it uncategorized so I don't get mixed up. If I do all, then we start losing it with the other stuff that's still loaded. Yeah. So I just I'm yeah. Gonna... I tried doing that over the summer, and I, I I'm glad I'm taking this class because I screwed it up and I lost everything. Yeah, I'll show you how to save it, uh, and then you'd you'd load a brand new fresh tabletop and then load your module into that game. Ah. Uh... Yep, that's that's the, actually how we close the lesson on that. And once we do that, the stuff will no longer be categorized. It'll be whatever we name our adventure. Um, this is good. This right now is a good spot to show if we made a story entry we don't want. We could just simply click on the edit list, and I could delete it. Now, part of this story thing, right? Do you embed the say like the map or whatever? Do you embed it in the? in the side note or do you embed it in the story as like a link mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll do it in the story right you you're 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 already uh conceptualizing what what this class is about when we tie this all together and we have you know like four or five panes of the story we're gonna have everything what i say nested or linked it's all gonna be linked into the story perfect yep so I'm going to go ahead, um, control Z, we'll get rid of entries. Let me see if I remembered where I left off because I did a lot of cursor movements since then. I want one that's single. Uh, so I'll just backspace it out. Okay, so we got the introduction. All right, some things I want to show you now that we have this up uh, are different text formats. Um, this, I think, should be a header. Good rule of thumb is to highlight everything, but it's not necessarily true. But highlight what you want to change the uh, the formatting, and you right click and go to paragraph type, and you could call that a heading. All right, say I want this the adventure. I it's a subheading, so maybe I want it bold and underline. I could right click, highlight it, right click, and go to formatting, bold, highlight it again, right click, and underline. Uh, you could also use the keyboard shortcuts of Control U for underline, Control I for italics, or Control B for bold. So I could undo it and then redo it. By this is my keyboard shortcuts. All right, so I undid it doing that. See, but that's the thing. Everything has to stay highlighted. You can also use the uh, Home and N key to shift and highlight entire sections at once. Yeah, yeah, if um, you're sav really savvy with keyboard shortcuts and how to navigate, it, it works here in, in Fantasy Grounds, most of them. I see a bad space here, so I'll clean that up. Okay, so I got this starting, starting to fill up. So I got the introduction in. Uh, we're going to lock this when you're done making a story entry. You lock it. Uh, I get technically you don't have to, but that's that way you don't actually, if you think you're, if your cursor you think is in the chat over here, but it's still blinking in the store and you start typing, it'll start inserting where you don't want it. But if you lock it out, you won't have to worry about that. So the lock button is the rule of thumb when you're done editing. Okay, I'm going to make the next story entry. We're not in the adventure yet. We're going to start with the referee's information. I'm going to call that, I'm going to make a new story item. You can call it 0 0.1. I'm only going to do um, about four storyboards total, so don't worry about it. I'm not making the whole adventure. Greg, I'm sorry. The uh, rule of thumb you just said about locking the story entry, I missed that. Yeah, so um, as you're editing, when you make a new story, this little, it. okay. yeah, it's unlocked. But when you're done, you want okay. to hit, Got it. click it with a mouse. Yep. Tracking. Okay, thanks. Sorry. Yep. So this one I'm going to go a little bit faster on. Just while you're doing that, and then some of these entries can be seen by the players and some can't be. Uh, the the none of, It's going to be an all or nothing. So that's another reason to break it up. Uh, you could share a single um, story entry, but it goes to the whole table. Uh, so you by making smaller and smaller sections and part and, and parcel. What's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, uh, segment. 
Yeah, I guess segmentation is a good one. Making smaller segments, uh, then that's when you do share. It's it's just the information that the players need specifically. So yeah, so then if you go like, oh, this is Bill's Tavern on set like five, you can then like part like have the package with like the drink menu say or or equipment menu for sale, but just keep it in that one storyboard. Yeah, uh, we'll do that actually. That's a good. That's a very good. Um, you could do that chat frame or whatever it's called in there. Then you could click on it and drag the whole thing to the chat 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 window too. How do you put a chat frame in? We're getting we're getting there. I'm with you. Okay. Yep. Do Do you know if there's a way to increase or decrease the font size? No, you are. Uh, other than the scale UI. No, technically, but uh, vanilla, you're stuck with what you have. There are extensions that you could apply and see if they could they get what you're looking for. I just I can't uh, I can't recommend any because I haven't used any. That makes sense. I haven't found yeah. any that work with Fantasy Ground with FGU without breaking something else. But if you guys find them, post them on the forums. Good call. Is there a way to uh, export this when you're done? To yep. Share it with other people. Yep, there sure is. I'll, I'll show you that. That's all part of packaging it up when we're done, and you know, give it a category. All right, there you, you go, Zargon. Files in this. What's that? Cool. Can you embed audio files in it? No, the uh, that Sirenscape link. It what it does is it, it's a chat trigger. You need an extension, and what it does is it presses your soundboard for you on your desktop. Uh, so currently, this does not support audio files, wave files. Okay. All right, real quick, guys, if you're uh, for especially my new newer uh, refs out there, what am I missing right now f for my header? The number. That's right. So it's going to be zero point one because it's going to go in sequence. All right. So let's talk about chat frames. So. Say this paragraph, the subsector is dominated by the Sword World Confederation, and it's supposed to be read uh, to the players so they have a background. What was brought up is a chat frame window. Uh, you do not, I know for a fact, you, for paragraph types, you do not need to highlight at all. You can just simply have the cursor anywhere in that paragraph and right click on it, go to about this five o'clock position, the paragraph types, and you have a chat frame. All right, so you know uh, visually this is something you need to read your players. This subsector is dominated by the Sword World Confederation with only a handful of worlds. As you're reading it, you could, or when you're done reading it, you could share it to your players by single clicking this. All right, and it came across. Uh, or you want your players to read somebody to read it out loud. That's how you would share that. Uh, say that you want this in an active voice of an NPC. Uh, we'll right click here. I'll go to assign active speaker at active speaker at the six o'clock position. We'll call him Mr. Kasari. So now we know this this NPC is saying this, and it, I click this again. Uh, now the players get the uh, the text immersion of the NPC uh, saying this out loud. Does anybody need to see that again? I know that kind of yes, please. Fast. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo all this. All right. So uh, again, once you have, do you need me to start from uh, adding the chat frame? Nope, that's good right there. Okay. So yeah. So right at the beginning, you, the cursor's got to be right at the beginning. Right click in there. Six o'clock position is the science speaker. You just type in uh, whatever the NPC's name is. So it doesn't have to be an actual NPC that you've created either. It could be anything you want. Exactly. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and I'll show you how you can speak in an active, actual NPC's voice uh, later uh, as we get to it, if you, if you remind me when we get there. But, yeah, so for but for the story, the, the way it's, it's, uh, it's part of the story, that's how you do it. So we're gonna I'm gonna go a little off script. I'm not gonna stay in the uh, the adventure, but we're gonna make the next uh, uh, pane here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. I'm done working in this one. Next up is gonna be um, the high port. We'll call it the uh, 
what's going to be a fun we with the bar do we want to somebody want to give me a bar name stumble in <laughs> <laughs> Just as like a side note, is it good to make a bunch of generic, uh, you know, like you have like Kmart or Target or something or Walmart or whatever, like, or do you just do it specifically like with the story? It really depends on your on your style and what you're doing. If it's a full homebrew and and you, and uh, you you say say you're at a high port, right, and you don't know where your players are going to go, you could build out about six storefronts and and a dozen bars and restaurants if you want. And 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 we'll show you how to put it on a map, and then how you could how you could pin them on the map and just follow where the tokens go, and then open a pin up which will link to the story, so you you have all that information on hand as they do that. Cool. Yeah. So the oh, let's put a B in there. The stumbling in. So we can make a, a, a drink list. I'll go ahead and I'll uh, give this a header. We have a couple things we could do. We could bullet it out. We could call it, uh, I'm gonna go with my uh, basic uh, beard lists. All right, and I could, in my paragraph type, I could go ahead and I could bullet it out and make a list. That's one example. We'll call that the beer list. All right. Uh, if we want to, if we need to, um, we can put a credits next to it. Um, I'll show you how to link items to it directly if we want to a little bit later. All right, so when I hit enter, uh, it wants to continue with that list. I'm gonna go ahead and set it back to body text by going to paragraph and body text. Let's let's go ahead and make a, a mixed drink. Um, this is gonna be a table this time. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a header real quick. All right, anybody got some traveler themed mixed drinks? Uh, no, something else. Stargazer. Cool. Give me one more. Two Aslans walk into a bar. <laughs> okay. And one so guy. there is going to be a bar fight then. Yeah. Let's go ahead and assign them um, numbers. So I'm going to give it one. And then uh, at the end, let's give them a credit price. I don't even know if that's steep or not. No idea. But we're going to build this out into a table, just like an Excel table. So we're gonna, obviously we're gonna, looks like it's gonna be, we want three rows, right? And then we also want three columns for the, you know, the unique ID and then for the name and then for the price. So uh, I'm gonna start at the first line, but right at the one, I'm gonna right click, paragraph. I'm gonna do a table. I created my first row. And I'm gonna join it by going to the next row, paragraph table and my third All right, let's slide it up a little bit next we want to break this into columns so where I want this rows column to start I'm going to put the cursor there I'm going to right click table command and I'm going to add a cell All right I want to start my second there's no there's no after this there's no order of operations that matters well, we could have just gone and made our third column if we wanted to but I like to visually uh, join all these together at the same time as I can. 
right? And then the third column is gonna be the price. What's the plus and minus sign that keeps appearing? Mm -hmm. I'll show you. We'll see if it's if it's functional or not. It's uh, uh, I guess glitchy might be a good word for it. Uh -huh. Like so, we don't want this white space, right? The one. So we want to see if we could we could pull the column in. So let's see if I could if I could uh, bring it in. Decrease column span. So it doesn't doesn't work for me. Anybody anybody had uh, oh, that worked increasing it. So it looks like you have to. It's already at its minimum uh, right now. In order in order you could you could make them longer though. It's up to you. Anybody have any any good tips on that? Or am I saying that right? I wonder if it'll change if you grab it and and make that uh, the box that the whole thing is in um, make it larger. Like down the the lower right corner where you get the little triangle. Yeah, right. keep oh, going. You're, oh, you're talking about right kind of stretching it like that. Yeah. Right. Now try and now see if it'll, like it'll let you adjust it. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. Yeah. No. All right. Sorry. No, yeah, that's good. It's worth a shot because I, I I don't think of everything. But there is a shortcut for adding another uh, box. It's hold down Control and hit Enter. I think it was. Sure. Let's see. Control and Enter. We'll put it right here at the CR. See if I can get a fourth column. It did give it a uh, sign. I wonder. What, what? Yeah. I do it all the time in mine, but now that I don't have mine up, I can't remember what it is. Yeah, there are, there are tons of short. We could get. I could probably find you guys a shortcut list on the keyboard shortcuts and share it uh, at the end of the session. But uh, we're just kind of kind of keeping it uh, within this two hour limit. Uh, we we. Control yeah, tab. That's what it is. Control tab. Let's give it a shot. Oh. Aha, yep, that is it, control tab. As long as your cursor is where you want it to be, it'll, that'll do it. I'm gonna undo it, control Z. Was there a, uh, a shortcut list you learned the control tab from? I don't think so, I think either I saw it on a video or read it somewhere on one of the forums. Yeah, I'm sure there's a centralized keyboard shortcut somewhere in the forums, but usually when we come across it, Right, it's when somebody asks a specific question, they just give the specific answer. All right. So now I'm going to keep building on this. Say, say this stumbling in, uh, they have a roulette wheel on the back, right? Uh, you know, right behind the bar, right at the, the bar mirror, right? And you don't get to order you drink. You have to roll for it, or you have to spin for it on the on the wheel. And I'm, I'm only using that as an example to show how to make a actual, this is a text table, but we're going to make a rollable table, right? And we do a lot of tables in, in uh, Traveler, as some of you all know. Uh, so we can make a functional table in Fantasy Grounds that'll make the roll for us. And we're going to use the bar as the example. This could be a random encounter. Uh, it could be a, a, uh, a random ship quirk if you want to make your own quirk table. Uh, it could be some kind of... Um, galactic event like pulsars and quasars and meteorite storms right it, it, it could be anything whatever your imagination has but for our imaginations is on drinking so we're going to make a rollable drink table i'm going to click here on tables i'm going to go there's all the stuff that comes with the rule book so i'm going to uncategorize it so i'm not looking at the junk i'm going to kind of keep this on this side so story is go. this when these random tables are used right is it a, a fact like like say does everyone see the same drink list even though it's random um they put nah, they they won't it depends I, it, it, dep it really depends if you let your players roll on the table or not that's the best way i could say it we'll build it out first and i'll show you what i mean by that okay yeah uh if you as the ref roll it they'll have no idea what's on the table but if you, if you let your players roll on the table, they will see what the results can be. So starting first with this table, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, edit list and create a new table. Uh, just so you know, there is some functionality out there where you could actually import tables off a CSV file. Uh, I'm not the guy to teach that, but that is a function. What's a CSV file? CSV comma separated value. Uh, it's, it's like an Excel sheet, but um, it's, it's a, 
it's it's a text version of Excel. There you go. Oh, okay, that's a great way to explain. It. I never thought of it that way. Never heard of it. Yeah. So, if, for anybody that's interested, it is it is functional uh, in in fancy rounds. But I'm going to just show you the manual method. All right. So we're going to call this the mixed drink list. Alright, because it matches this header. What I'm going to do, this is just me, uh, totally up to you, you as the uh, the referees. I'm actually going to do 0 0.3. So when my data is saved, I know exactly uh, what it's linked to in my story. And I do this for everything that I build. Uh, I link it to wherever I'm going to nest it in my story. I give it this the, the same numeric. Okay, we're going to yep, call this the mixed drink list again. Right. Uh, the cool thing about this is, um, I know this looks like a D6. We have the different polyhedrals. Uh, physics and, and, and geometry doesn't apply to this table. It could be a, a, a D7, I guess. And I like rolling D zeros. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it could be whatever. But we're gonna make this a D, essentially it's a D3. Um, I could drag and drop this D6 in here. And then I would have to be a, a one to two would be the one, a two to three would be the two. But uh, I'm gonna clear that and just show you that I a one to one because that's what the value I gave it. All right, and I'm gonna this is unlocked, so I'm gonna see if I can't copy. All right, left the brackets in there. I don't like that, so I'm gonna clear them out. It must have picked up the brackets from the columns. That's fine. Next up is the the two to two is going to be the stargazer. What if you tried to just copy the entire table into this? Let's try that. So I, I do need a new row. So I'm going to add add a row. Let's see, the first problem is where would I start the paste? Right here in the label. So I don't think that would Why I don't think that would work. Right. Yep, we'll give it a shot. Worst case scenario, control Z. Yep, there you go. So okay. put the whole thing. Sure in. Yep. Okay. And then we know three to three is two Aslands. Sorry, tab did not work. You do have to mouse click in and oh, and I hit caps lock at some point. <laughs> it's man still on. All right, there we go. So that's good enough, and we're gonna lock this by stop editing. Lock it up here. All right, for functionality, you'll see that you can roll it, and it comes across in the game chat. And uh, player uh, referee rolls can be seen, so the players know that they got two ass lands. Can you put a uh... So how did it know that a usual the six sided dice? That's it. How did it? It just knows. Well, it won't. It'll come across because we only have d sixes, right? Let's um, uh -huh. let's go ahead and do something real quick though. And there's another question coming. You want to ask that while I'm setting this up? Oh, how do you add money to it? So if you go, okay, you got two Aslans. That's five credits or whatever. Oh, uh, I would just edit at the end then. Are you going to cover how to nest tables? Yep, about to do that. Okay, good. No, no, I mean, like, if someone says, okay, I take that, like, you would take an item off. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay, I'm with you. We're going to get really ahead, um, but I'll do it right now. Well, this is a great, this is a great question. Um, so say this, we want these to be items. All right, so get, get ready, because we're about to change gears and stay on this real quick, but items right here we're gonna we're gonna create these three items all right so the first one I'm gonna edit list I'm gonna create a new add item and I, I'm not gonna get too much in the weeds on this but I'm just gonna call it and I gotta I gotta move so I can see what I'm typing and I so apologize you still go like 0 0.3 then you'll go Roman Coke next one blah 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 like do you still do you still name them with the naming conventions? Uh, this I won't for my items, uh, just because I could always just do a, a search. This is searchable, so that's why I won't do that. Okay. But that's again. Oop, maybe I should put a value on there. Is there a credit cost? There it is. 
is five. Okay, now I'll lock it. I'm, we, we're gonna make uh, items in a little bit, but uh, just, this is just really quick proof of, proof of concept. Roman Coke, right? Uh, I could drag this TAS symbol now right here to Roman Coke. I'm gonna keep creating, I'll create the other two real quick. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Why, why are you? You'll see. Why are you creating the little rum and coke with the task symbol? Oh, you gotta show me, okay. Yeah, I'll show you why. Just, we just gotta get it in real quick. And this one's four credits. Some players can buy them and put them in their inventory. All right, I'm gonna drag and drop that one to this stargazer. All right, and then the third one. This doesn't, remember, I know where our, this applies to anything, not just drinks, anything you could think of. Can you add a picture to those too? Uh, yeah, yeah. At the bottom in the text field, you could you could link a link a link an Im image. Oh, okay. If okay. you look at the items in like the supply supply catalog, and then copy one, that's, so you can actually uh, unlock it. It'll show you how. It'll show you right where it's at. That's, that's exactly how I teach uh, homemade items, and that's coming up once we get down there. But where this it's such a good question, and the show. So right, so just just this is what I'm talking about the nesting guys. So I just created three, three uncategorized items: the rum and coke, the stargazer, and two aslans walking to a bar. I just nested them into this table. Now watch this. I'm going to nest this table into my story. I can close this out, and this is all going to be. I'll lock that. It's all going to be linked. I'll close out my table. Now I can roll on this table. And now the rum and coke is right here for my player. Go ahead and mister the, uh, the yellow. We're gonna see if you drag and drop that TAS symbol, will it update your inventory? There you go, yep. it has a rum and coke. What it doesn't do, and I've asked this on a features, it did not subtract the credits though from his cash on hand. That's not there yet. But I've seen tables where they, it, it like rolls and then rolls again for like uh, oh, yeah. facts and yeah. yeah that's uh that that you're gonna have to watch a youtube video on because that is its own we, okay. we could spend we could spend about 20 more minutes setting that up and uh we have a lot okay. more content to cover not a problem but that is a thing you could do tables and tables you can ask tables within tables and die rolls this so this this result you could link it by zzz to another table and it'll roll on that table and you it could just go straight down a pipeline that way what do you mean Z, Z, Z? Yeah, I'll show you real quick. So, because uh, I do have a good table right here on the D66 compendium. And I'm sorry, this is we're getting a little little off, but I do want to show it. So this is how these those those tables will actually look. Z, Z, Z subtable. Right. And that, you, and you, you literally type in the word, I mean the letter Z, Z space and then subtable. Um, and then I, I think you, if you're, I think it should work where you just drag and drop it. But it's just a ZZ subtable, and that's that's that that's it. I'm not going to go too much into it, but okay, it it is possible you do tables into tables, and that's how it will look. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly unload that D66 compendium because it has too much stuff in it uh, for what what we're doing. Okay. Just as a side note, so with that with, with the naming convention you use, like, do players see that? Uh, which one? The zero point three? Yeah, stuff like that. Like uh, so, three, yeah, four. they can. So I was telling you. So uh, right now, Mister the Yellow can't see this table, but I can share it with my players if I want them to roll on my tables. I could grab the TAS symbol either on the table or out of the tables section. All right, and now, now when he opens this, he everybody just saw this is table zero point three drink mix list, and he just rolled on the table. So until until you share the table in chat or by right clicking and doing sharing and share record, uh, until you do that, your players don't know the name of the table and what's going on. But what about with the story? Because like, doesn't it kind of like we were uh, we were fighting these androids like last week, and and it it did come up like Android one, two, three, and I kind of knew like oh there isn't a fourth one because it's not really random. <laughs> So is it the same thing with the story? Like if they just see, okay, we're at one, 
now we're at two, now we're at three. They kind of know, oh, there's probably a fourth one. Yeah, but that's only, again, that's only if you're sharing the story. Are you, You're not talking about encounters, are you? Or just general story elements. Like, if you go, oh, we're going into the Stumbling Inn, and then you share that so they can buy drinks off the mix, don't they know that it's, like, point three now, or it doesn't come up that way? No, it does. The, yeah, he, he definitely sees... So, if you, you're right. If you do want to conceal that out of your story, that's a good that's a good point. You, you can delete it, and now they don't know, right, that this is this is in point, point 0.3. That is a good point. So, I guess it's... Uh, it's for me, my players don't know how many story items there are, so I guess it wouldn't really matter. But uh, you're right; they're, they're, that you could get meted by your players if they start under, uh, uh, deciphering your your numbering sequencing. Especially if you tell them ahead of time this is a three part adventure, and, you, and it's obviously one through three in your story. But yeah, totally up to you. I, I like it this way. It just like I said, if I do this and I have more than one table, and I go to my tables, it's it's easily I know what it, this belongs to in the story, and I could go to my story, which is right here, and I say, oh, this is a zero point three, so it's in this story item. It's easy for me. Yeah, I get it. That's it's a good tip. Yep, yeah, up to you though. I mean, I under I get what you're saying. Yeah, they could definitely meta you and start deciphering what you're doing. Yeah, I just, I like, the game I played, I had a totally great time, but I did think, like, okay, there's one, two, three. Well, there probably isn't a fourth one hiding somewhere. Like, this is just, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I will go on a tangent, though. If you're talking about your encounter in the combat tracker, right, so um, I'll just, it's funny, you're still in here. <clears throat> so and we did we did this in DM 101. So we got two and three. It starts numbering. If you, as a, as a ref, go to your options... And go to yeah, the you change it to random. Yeah, change this to random. That's yeah. that's the only that's the only control you have to prevent that. But that's only in the combat tracker. It doesn't apply anywhere else in the game. Okay. Um, that's we we've been we've been pushing pretty hard. Do we have any questions about uh, text formatting, paragraph styles, uh, lists? Columns and rows and tables, tables. So, hey, can you embed a picture of the bar in Stumbling in as well, or is that a sub part of the story? That's, can I can I embed the image of the bar right here in Stumbling in? Yeah. Does it come like? Do you have to pre-show it to the characters, and then go? Do you know what I mean? Say go oh, oh. Stumbling in, and you show like a front of a spaceport with a picture of people walking in or something. Does it go in that part of the story, or is it a separate thing you share? Mm -hmm. That's where I would put it. I would put it. I would. I would. Uh, you know, once we we're gonna about to get actually to loading images. That's that's actually next. Uh, but yeah, we would. Uh, we would. We would definitely link it in here with the TAS link and nest it in this story because there's no limit on how many TAS links we could have. And we'll name that the uh, the image the uh, the stumbling in, and then we probably have an, uh, like a map of a floor plan of the stumbling in. That'd be the second uh, image, which is technically a map, right? And we just keep building in. We could try to do that real quick now. Um, I just don't know if I have assets on hand. We could try to Google search it real quick. I mean, you don't need an actual picture of a bar. No, you don't. But um, what I am gonna do, because we are about to get there, and I, I do wanna, I do wanna start embedding some images. So remember, this is my um, PDF that I converted to Word. I am about to start the image. Any any questions? Sorry, before I, I move on and how I'm going to get images in game. All good. Okay. So remember, we made that data folder because uh, I'm storing. I keep closing it. I I made a uh, marches uh, to fantasy ground conversion. This is where. I'm gonna. I push to talk those stupid things on when I click. All right, sorry. So this is where I'm gonna start storing my images as well. So remember, this is this folder is where my images are gonna be stored when I start saving. So usually what I do is I'll just save them all at once. So I just right click on this. All right, save as picture. 
and my push to talk is doing something funky every time I'm, I'm hitting it. I don't have push to talk on, and it seems to be working fine. Oh, uh, <laughs> my, my push to talk is alt, and it clears my right click. But I'm thinking if you wanted to change yours to voice to activated. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. It probably what you're will work. Yeah. yeah, I've got my push to talk off as well. Well, my, I guess what I'm saying is I'm 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 holding it as I'm talking and trying to explain what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna be silent and just do it. And I'm not getting the alert, so that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna just right click and and uh, I guess copy it real quick. Hmm, I wish there was a better way to do this, but all right. So I just hit Control C. I guess I'll put this in paint real quick. Uh, not preferred. I wanted it to save as photo. I use snip sometimes and uh, just save it as a photo. Ah, uh, that's why it's grabbing the whole background. That's a good, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to snip this. So, snipping tool. You can see this. I'm going to grab it. Oh, I moved. There we go. Okay, so I have my image. I'm going to save it. Where do you get snip from? Is it just like a like a generic tool from somewhere? Windows 10. Yeah, it's a Windows 10 tool. I don't know if there's a Mac version or not, if anybody can speak to that, if that's maybe the question. All right, so I do like to kind of identify what I'm saving. So there's one. I'll save that. I'll grab this subsector. I'll have to zoom out a little bit. There we go, perfect. And let me snip that. Did I close my snip? Of course I did. Snip on websites? Yep, I'm actually going to do that on the map, Traveler map next. You can use it on anything that's being displayed on your screen. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, so say say um we I got the subsector map, but I want something a little bit more interactive. That's that's so funny you said that. I already have it prepped, so we know in this adventure if we pre-read it that we're going to be traveling from Flamarian uh, to the planet Mithril. So. This is travelermap.com. I will share it. Uh, I know we, most of you already probably know what it is. It's going to be coming to you in Discord chat. Okay. So you start off by searching the planet. And it zooms in real nice for you. Uh, we have a couple, more than a couple of different views. Um, this is the standard black and white. You could go up to the upper right here and you can start changing it. I usually work out a Mongoose Traveler 2 or eye candy. Um, but this is, you, you cover over it, we got printer friendly. This is the Mongoose. This is what usually what the publications look like. Right? And you can see the outlines nice. of Third Imperium and the Sword Worlds, their borders. Cool. Right? But eye candy is really nice. Right? And what I want to do, I want to make the jump route to uh, Mithril, the planet Mithril. So I do jump route. Uh, it says you could type. I, I don't always have the best luck. I usually have to click on Mithril. Yep, so no dice there. So go back to Flamarian. Jump route. And I know Mithril is right over here near the Sword Worlds. Steel. Hmm. Call it out if you see it. You're right. Upper right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yep, the mithril. So I'll just click it. So make your destination. And then click it. All right, it gives me the J2 route. It's these little uh, green. Is J1 available? And all right, that's how many jumps you got to do to J1. My guys, they only have a scout ship that they rescued out of um, 
Walston. So this is the route they're going to have to take. Uh, we could actually make this in a, in a um, different view instead of a top-down 2D. We could go like that. Holy if we crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the map the map site is awesome. Yep, and it's free. It is so crazy. How did you, how did you rotate it? Yeah, it's this... Um, I don't know what this is called because when you hover over it, it doesn't do anything, but it's it's this. Perspective Jeez. button. Is that pretty, yeah, that's the perspective button. Great. Right. Yeah, I use this to map uh, the travelings of all of uh, our crew over the past year and a half in game time. It was really awesome because it gave them an idea of where they've been in the universe. It's a really awesome tool. Love it. Right. Now, just like uh, what we're talking about with the snip, I could snip this into my game, right? Because this is anything that is is viewable. So this will be what I uh, will call this what I want to use. All right, I'll go ahead and save this. That's wicked handy. Oh, I should say PNGs is what you'll hear is the preferred file because they're smaller. However, a, a three to four hour module with some color images and, and JPEG isn't going to be a big deal. But PNG, that's that's a rule of thumb. If you use Discord for your chat uh, voice program while you're playing Traveler, um, there's a bot that ties into the Traveler map that you can pull a lot of this stuff up, not like the perspective and stuff. But you can pull up subsector maps, uh, travel routes, and that all within Discord. Oh, do you know what the it, bot is called? Yeah, if you could share that, you don't have to do it now. But if you want to mind sharing that at the end of the session, I'd be super interested in that. Of course, I know what the bot is called because I have it. Um, <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't stress looking for it now if you don't want to. But yeah, I'll, I'll pick, I'll pick your API. brain for it at the end. Aren't they working on an API to tie this in, or has someone mentioned it at that time? I think it has API in it. It does have API. Mad Beer Man has an extension, but it is glitched. They they did some update to the JSON, I think. Okay. So he hasn't What's gone back. API? Um, I don't know what it stands for, but it lets you pull data out of stuff from behind the scenes. Yeah, it's whether the, oh, it's whether the web developer pretty much leaves the, the back door open or not. Oh, stands okay. for application programming interface. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's to embed the, the HTML like just in the, those boxes, right? That's what they were talking about at the meeting or whatever. The, when all when like the developer and, and Mongoose and those guys were all. Oh yeah, chatting. a couple Fridays ago. Yeah. Hey G Rex, is there a way I can post an image to the uh, group chat? I don't know if they let you or not as a player. Uh, not in not in the or, or uh, student no, not in the chat room. Yeah, I think it's is role based. Um, if you want to P DM it to me directly, I could share it if it if it's you know. Yeah. If you think yeah, it's worth sharing, I'll DM it to you. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, and I'll I'll rewrite it back, and then I'll find out I can't do it either. <laughs> I know <laughs> I know I, I know I can. <laughs> okay, so, um, well while you're doing that. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this screen now for now. We'll come back. i got a couple more links we're going to share because this is the, the Mongoose version. All right. And so oh, that's my snipping tool. Close that. So close this. We're done with tables. There you go. Oh, that's cool. Oh, how do you, and you got the overlay with the... That's awesome. Let me, I'm copying it now. Oh, that's uh, Pirates of the Drenac. Did you make this one custom for that? That's, this is all of the adventures plus all the optional adventures that you could possibly use in the POD campaign with the planet stops marked out. This is helping me visualize where the where the party might end up, which where the adventures take them, that sort of thing. Yeah, so here we go. Let me uh, paste this real quick. There, it's coming, coming inbound. That's, that's what we just shared with us. Was this on the forums? I think I feel like I've looked at this. I think he posted on the forums too. Yeah. Yeah, I posted it around. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I've seen this. <clears throat> yeah, that's awesome. Did you post? I don't see it. It's back in classroom two. 
That's how. That's oh how, shoot! That's, I, I thought it was gonna be on this, this that, table. Top. Yeah, I'm not gonna bring that one in, but I did say. But that's that's how wild. That's how that's how in depth. That's how that's how um, chunky those tools are. I guess it, it has a lot of depth to it. All right. So let me get everybody's little. I gotta keep us on track. We got 40 minutes remaining, and I got a lot I want to show you still. So I am going to now bring in some of those images and maps into the game session. So I'm um, going to the menu to images. All right, we currently don't have anything. I need to import files because we saved them as PNGs. All right, I'm gonna go to the folder where we're storing all our data. All right, it says JPEG, right? We saved them as PNGs. So I'm going to get the subsector map in. All right, I'm not going to play with this. I'll lock it. So a lot of people ask, how do I get rid of the pane on the right? That's because this is lock, uh, uh, unlocked. Once you lock it, it'll look a lot better. You can resize it by going to toggle toolbar and zoom to fit. And there we go. Now it's it looks pretty logical that way. All right, I'm going to get my other image and map in. JPEG. This time it knew what file it folder we're in, so this is we'll get to the image in. All right, same thing. We'll unlock it. And I believe the Traveler Map website will make you a world map too, randomly. Yeah. What do they call that? Where it's that triangles are cut out on it. Uh, there's a yeah. I've used it to make make a make a few for my game. Yeah. Well, we'll, well, if we got time at the end, we'll play with those tools and see how how much we could get out of them. But I just want to make sure we get the fancy grounds tools. Yep. I'll cover if it. you guys have an hour to kill, go to the Traveler map and just play with it, and you'll be amazed by what it has. And we'll get this uh, I guess, uh, isometric. There we go. So we'll get that in our game. Uh, cool. All right, so we have a couple maps in the world. All right. Um, players can't see this. We know that because there's no P next to it. It's not public yet. But I know for the referee's information, I probably want to know the subsector information. So I'll go ahead and unlock that and I'll nest that in here. Now that it's in the story, because the story is not shared with my players, I'll lock it. I have inf this information. I could share it if I want to by either right clicking it and hit sharing, or I could drag and drop it here. You'll see once I drag and drop it, the little P will come next to it. I know this is now a public asset. Uh, you can also no, drag and drop when, it directly to the player, a single player, and only that player can see it. Yeah. Neat. Um, when it comes to those maps, and you and you decide you want to, you're doing a quick battle or an unexpected battle. If you haven't prepared the map ahead of time with grids, is the grid absolutely necessary to run the battle? Um. How do I want to? I mean, will so all the functionality of so well, here, here's the dice. Here, everything still roll. Yeah, here's um, we'll take the um, the, the mithril right. So say this is going to be a space battle, outside the planet of mithril. This is this is the battle map we're going to use. I'll show you. It's not necessary, but I'm going to show you why you may want to still consider it anyway. So I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the layer, set a grid. Uh, then I know I want it to be um, hex. So you could change it to from this method. I think. Yes. No, I right next to the color wheel. Oh yeah, the all right. So yeah, uh, grid type. Uh, I would don't. I'll, we'll make this like a white so we can see it better. It's not showing up. You have to create it first. Click on the click on the mouse. Go back to the grid and click on the mouse and just make one. Oh. I don't know why I didn't do that already. Yep, there you go. All right, so sorry about that. Now here's the thing. Um, this will tell you the distance per hex. So maybe this is uh, 20 kilometers per hex in space. I don't know. I'm just making that's probably not even sure. remotely close. But for this, for the sake of argument, I'll lock it, fit it. When we have a space battle and we measure distance, when I target yeah. my opponent. It'll count that oh. distance because I, I pre-measured it by setting it right here. Okay. Right. Do you set the fog of war in there too? 
so that when you initially show it to players, maybe they don't see the whole plan or they don't see above it or whatever, you uh, know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so you can... This is one of the rare examples I would... I don't know how I would do that. I'm just thinking, because space is 3D. You can do that. You could. You got two methods. You have the... Uh, sorry. So you have the mask, right? This is the old way of doing it from Classic. Uh, you turn... Uh, we'll hide the area. Am I doing this right? Let me, let me make this bigger. I don't know if it's going to translate well on black on black. No, not working right. I think you hit the plus button. That's how it's. Yeah, that, I mean, I mean I, you can tell I haven't done this in Unity. <laughs> right, in that. Okay, so then you unmask it. It's different in classic, this function. And as they come, uh, you can hold down, uh, you just do a regular mouse drag and do a, a regular square. Uh, or you could do the, the, I'm holding alt and I'm drawing it out. Right, and this is what they see now. Right, as they get closer to the planet. I guess it would make more sense if there was objects blocking it. Uh, but then, so there's some. If there's another, we'll call uh, a ship on the other side of the planet that's blocking their view, they wouldn't know it's back here. Maybe like radar or something. They couldn't couldn't detect it that far. Yeah, but yeah, it, it works. It's, it's hard to hard to do this on a space map, but it's there. So does this First. change? In, does this change in real time? Like as you're doing it, it opens up for them too. Um, we're talking seconds behind because you know this. We're hosting this on the cloud. Yeah, but yeah, but that, like when you have this tool open, and you're doing it. Yeah, if as, as long yeah, as long as I've shared it and I'm sharing this, and I can see that Mister the Yellow is seeing this. Oh, know, that's right. Yeah, now now you'll see that reveal in, in within yeah, seconds. Yeah, even with the dis delay on Discord, it's pretty instant. Yeah. For a space map, I wouldn't use the fog of war or the mask at all. I would just keep the tokens uh, hidden on the combat tracker until you pop them. Yeah, that's a very excellent. That, that's how I would do it too. Because I can't think of a reason. Maybe line of sight in an asteroid field would be fun. That's about it. And I don't know if I would take the time to set that up. So you or might go cloud. like, okay, if there's a space station here. Then you go as you get closer. And then you pop the space station icon. Yep. It comes up, and then you go, oh, there's some pirates just came in. Boom! You put theirs on the on the sheet too. Yeah, because yeah, you, you have you a space could, combat. I could show that real quick, actually. So I know exactly what you're saying. So I'll, you could preset them with a, a battle. Yeah, so we, we're we're the scout courier. We're the good guys, and the, the bad guys are going to be um, what are they going to be in mercenary two mer a mercenary cruiser and a light fighter, right? So we are the we are the uh, scout courier for this just this fictitious space battle. And I'll drag and drop it here. All right. And then we have a mercenary cruiser hiding on the backside of the planet and a light fighter. So the scout courier, because I'm going to reveal the light fighter. Oh, that ID visible. They'll see each other on this map. The players in the scout courier do not know this mercenary cruiser here because I have not revealed it yet. It's still hidden. And each turn that we go through, each round, I could keep moving its distance. Right. And then when it when it comes here at this turn, then I'll reveal it, and then they have the the pucker effect. Is there a method for doing a like three D space? No, I actually posed that question in the uh, the travel room to see if I had any good responses on that. Cool. I couldn't hear what he said. What was the question? Uh, what so we. Uh, space isn't flat. We actually we, we play in a 3D environment in in real life. Uh, is there a way to there, account there for that? There were vector well, movement I mean, rules for Traveler that allow you to do that, but uh, it's not part of the core core rules. It is. It is. It is 3D, but in reality, you're you're still playing on a plane. The plane just moves. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't want to get too. We could go in the weeds and talk about that one for an hour or two, I'm sure. So I just want totally. to show so proof of concept. So now that the world is there, um, so we have the image, the map of the subsector, and I uh, I do want to put in the uh, world mithril in this story. So now that's nested in my referees information, so I have a quick access to it uh, if that's where I want it in my story. 
Just one second. So back to that thing with the other map. Like, yeah. once you put those enemies in it and you put the free trader and everything, now when you go back and click on it, will it just come up as, like, it's already set up, just like that? Um, so you let, can let's get, let's, yeah. Videos. Not not this method, not really. Um, because we're not going to always keep them in the space combat tracker. What we want to do is build an encounter. And, and uh Unfortunately, that's not functional for space combat, uh, spacecraft combat yet. But I could show you how to do that for regular NPCs. Do do players have control over their spaceship uh, in this in this version, or is that still coming? It's still coming, not yet. You still give one player yet. control. Um, so let's see if this works. We'll see because I'm gonna I'm going off of there. We go. So he. That, I mean, but I, yeah, Mr. Yellow, I, I have no way of shooting. It. I have no buttons to shoot. Nope, not yet. Uh, so that's what I was wondering about. No. Just the token is all we have functionality over. Uh, what you can do if we do the optional rule where you're allowed to have items over 1,000 kilograms, I could mm -hmm. just put the the scout courier's turret on your inventory, right, and then it knocks right. in your actions. We could do that. Right. There's a workaround. Uh, Mad Beer Man is he's trying to make a graceful, functional uh, asset, but that's still coming. So how do you do space combat? Do you just still do battle stations? Like one guy's the pilot, one guy's whatever, and then you decide out like that? Yeah, so we do have a big uh, big space map. And Seth Skorkowski, he had a really good way of doing it with that little radar, the 360 degrees that showed short, medium, and long range. And I just kind of we just kind of track it. Um, it. It's not visually stunning. They stay centered on that. And then my pilot tells me they're thrust. And we have only had two space combats in the almost ten months I've been playing. So very, very, very dangerous. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah, but I did. I mean, that's what I did. I gave I gave my turret gunner the the uh, the cannon, and I told my pilot, "Tell me how much you're moving, and how much you're how much uh, assistance you're giving to your gunner. Because if you don't use your full M drive movement, then he gets a bonus to the shooting, right?" You know, then I had people taking sensor stations. My engineer was ready for uh, damage control, all that. Cool. But it's, uh, yeah, not graceful. I'll say that. Not yet. It will be. I, I'm confident in MBM. All right. Go ahead and close that. We're uh, 30 minutes, so. All right, so you guys get the, uh, the gist then of loading images and nesting them into our story. Yes. We do got to do make one more entry, so this is going to be more for the players. So we'll call it chapter, which will be the actual one. All right, I can nest the uh, the jump route right here. And this is, I'm going to show you guys something, um, how do I want to do this? All right, so hopefully there's enough real estate. So this is kind of answers the, the railroading thing. Uh, I'm going to open up this image. We had a bunch of planets, right? So um, I'm going to create a bunch of little story entries for each each planet, possible planet in this subsector. I'm not going to create them all, but just for uh, for reference, just imagine what's what's about to happen. one more All right I could take oh I was I, I was dumb why didn't I keep numbering uh, next on that is 1.2 Bowman is 1.3 yep okay see how that got jumbled out of order because the alphanumerics this is better. And 1.4. Alright. So I guess I could actually pin the story to the planet as we go.
Uh, we could do this the whole way, and we could do sub, you know, alternate options. Are those visible to the players? Not yet. Um, if we want them to be, I could right click, and then make link shareable. It depends on the information that we we nest into the story item. So put it back in private. So we have we could do a couple things. We could make that pin, uh, Astaline. I could uh, I could make it a random encounter by going to the tables, and there is a space I'll go out of the that comes with the core rules. Uh, yep, space encounter. Right. So now when the my 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 crew goes to Astaline, I know that I'm going to roll this. All right, and I could do that the whole way. Oh, they had a micro uh, meteorite storm. Ooh, that's bad. All right. Um, we could actually uh, put a whole story item and build this out. Um, another thing we may want to do, we could put images of Asseline if we had it. We could put that in, in um, really this one. We could put the image in there if we had it. Uh, we can build, we're going to show you this real quick. The system, create a new system, add item. All right, we could just do the entire Astaline uh, and, and build this thing out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Then you can link it for your players to see. Yep, that, that'd be a good way to do it. And I could get the UWP by taking a quick look at the map again. So here's Astaline. Oh, here we go. Oh, this view doesn't. Uh, that's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip it back to my uh, mongoose one because it gives me the the numbers B seven A seven four zero two A, right? We could fill that out. I think I missed a digit. Uh, what? It, but you get the gist of it, right? And this is and it, but it, it auto filled. I missed the tech level, so we'll make this a. Uh, there we go. All right, so you get, uh, I didn't like that. So, tag. There we go, tag level 10. All right, so it, it reads my hexadecimal that I made for a UWP for that planet. Uh, is this Sindel subsector? Oh, there's Trojan Reach, then Sindel. go back and get the uh, the hex is 0931 right and we keep filling this out but yeah I could I could definitely now that I got this system made I could link that in the story I can provide that to my players so the ship computer will automatically read the system information for them when they land and then I can make that shareable I think I clicked on the wrong one. There we go. So now I got two pins there, one for me as the ref and one for the players. The ref one. Yeah, because I thought about doing that for like a subsector map so they could see all the planets around them. Yep, that'd be an excellent way of doing it. And you can build this out the whole way by using story items and nesting the information in. Uh, the, the pin will be linked directly to that story item. And then what you include in the story item is, is what you will see as the ref in a red pin. Or what the players will see when you make it shareable with a green pin. So part of that story, do you, is that where you nest NPCs? Like you would say, oh, in the red pin, okay, now uh, there's going to be a, a cruiser there, a pirate cruiser or something or whatever. Yeah, so we're not we're not there in the world of uh, Mongoose Traveler on uh, Fantasy Grounds where there is a spaceship encounter yet. But I will show you how to do that when we do it, build an NPC encounter. Um, we're gonna make some items, and then we're gonna make uh, NPCs, and we're gonna make an encounter. That's the last three items I have left. But cool. yeah, I'll show you how to do it with a regular NPC and make an encounter, cool. and then when we get the the expansion that we need for the game for the spaceship encounters, that's that's coming, and we could do that as well. So, so but with this jump route, say map, right? Yeah. Because they don't have the mechanics built in to automate. What do you do? You just put in your ref notes cruiser and then you can populate the battle kind of half, like as you go yeah well <clears throat> like i've been pretty good in my players if they're in the third imperium space i know right here they're they're kind of not 
this this stretch there could be piracy. I don't, I don't, I don't include it, but that's because I don't like managing space combat in fantasy grounds right now. But it's it's perfectly valid. I mean, that's why people play Travelers for space combat, right? That's one of the reasons. And there's always theater of the mind. Yeah, and there's theater of the mind. Yeah, my 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 players, I I throw them different things. Um, uh, you know, they they hit a. Uh, 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 like a microwave burst from a nearby sun and it disables a, a piece of electrical equipment and I make them respond to emergencies. Um, I'm less encounter-based, uh, NPC encounter-based, than I am in my D&D games. Yeah, I just mean, well, even if the encounter was like, I don't know, you don't have to attack everybody you meet, right? Like it could yeah. just be, I don't know, there's another ship that's trading with you or some ship comes by that's in Breast the or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah, I do that a lot. They they come across like derelict space stations, and then I, I see if they want to go explore it or not, and then I'll have NPCs in there for that that are already trying to claim salvage. That a hundred percent has happened. We do that. And and I will say this: if this was my group going from doing this jump route, this is a four hour session just to get from point A to point B because they're going to explore all the high ports, they're going to do all their trading on the way. Right, and they have very. They have one guy that has an ex. Uh, well, yeah, it's an Excel sheet. It's not Google Sheets. He has an Excel sheet that he manages everything for the group. He he tracks uh, birthing costs, fuel costs. You know whether it's refined fuel, unrefined. They just got a ship that has a fuel scoop now, so they like to do frontier refueling. Hey G, I sent you another image uh, oh. while we're waiting for MBM's uh, fleet. And crew positions. I mocked up an image, and then we're using tokens for the crew members, and they and they get to move them around so they can uh, decide because they have multiple. They have two ships, and they got to split their crew between. It's a nice visual aid. That's good. You mind if I share with the group? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So coming in chat. So yeah, you, and you just did you just make this uh, this graphic yourself, and then you allow the, yeah, the players to position a, their their token on whatever station they're on. Yeah, that's right. They can move the tokens around. That's cool. All right. So yep. So my players will be doing trade this whole way, and like I said, this would be a four hour session for my guys. Um, the the rule book has pretty good rules on, on how to do trade. Um, where is it? Spacecraft. On. There it is. Trade. Book. Where is it at in chat? I'm not I'm not seeing these links that you guys have posted. In classroom two chat. I see. Cla it says classroom two, and that's got G Rex live. Yeah, oh, that's the voice chat. Go above it. Yeah, just yeah, about four channels above it. Scroll up. It's the hashtag classroom two. Or is that a pound sign? I don't know what it is anymore. Oh, flat. Okay. Depends on how old you are. Oh, yeah. I found it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Holy crap, there's a whole lot of talking going on there. Yeah, there's a little bit. Will that be available after the class? Yeah, I'll be around. Cause this, I'll be I know. Around. I mean, will the chat still be there? Oh, yeah, it'll be there. It, it's. Uh, I don't know anybody that clears that, so it'll be there. Good, okay. Okay. All right, so you have the, the regular rules for trade. Uh, it's usually how to get freight, uh, flat rate, like uh, uh, mail, uh, parcel packages, and um, customers. What do you call people that, that fly with you? <laughs> passengers. passengers. There it is. Jeez, Louise. Right, and you have, <laughs> you have different types of passage, right? You have high passages, where, you know, that's where they get their own stateroom. Middle passages, where you just cram them in sardines. And then, uh, or well, middle passages and really sardines. That's they get they you get four to a room on that, right? Uh, you get the basic. That's where they cram you in, uh, like sardines. But then you have low passage, which is where you're cryogenically frozen in, in, in stasis, uh, which comes at a risk of never waking up again. All right. So you get, you negotiate all that, and they got tables for it here. But I'm going to share a tool. And that's for passengers. This is for the freight. 
And there's there's you know modifiers depending on the starport you're in, the tech level. If your if your ship is armed for mail, right? Because it's like the Pony Express in the Wild West. And it's important that mail mail isn't technically just like an envelope with a stamp on it. Uh, nothing moves faster than light than a ship, and that includes communication. So you could be given a communication device that'll transmit what happened in this system to the next system, and it's like a relay. That's why I like to call it like the Pony Express. So the the, sh the next system over may not may not know what's going into the system one parsec away for weeks or months if nobody jumps into their system with mail. Uh, I'm going to close this reference because I want to show you a, a cool tool I've been using. Uh, and I'm not. I, I think I'm about 80% proficient on it. Uh, but I'll show you it, and you guys could we could pick it apart real quick. Just while you're pulling that up in the story mode, can you just put the like a put a picture in it, or does it just you have to put the picture in the notes? All right. So the um, let me close that. You're talking about in story mode and putting the, the the image. You don't have to put it in there. You can play it right out of the image button. Yeah. If can you, you want. put it just right in there, like? Like right in the list. Oh, into the story from from images to story. Yeah. No, it won't work like that. See, I'm trying to drag it now. It re it does require a story uh, entry, so it has to be put in story. Okay. I mean, you could. It could be that could be all it is is a placeholder for images. Like I could here watch this. I could do this. This is kind of fun. I guess I call it an appendix. Then I could drag all my images over here, and now it's now it's uh, binned in my story for quick reference, so I don't have to go to images, and they're all in one spot that way. Food for thought. Did the temp does the templates button do anything? Right now. So there's no story template created right now. Mm -hmm. Um, there for? is one inside the uh, um the chat um on uh, FGU um, I'll, I'll send I'll send it to you okay or I'll send you a link to it what's the story template where did I find it anybody care to I've never used them so I don't think I could speak to it yeah it it's it gives you the bones uh, so that you can um, it, it basically everything that that um, Greg just showed us how to do it, it has it already set there, and then you just kind of fill in the blanks. Oh, you mean like if it was like, oh, this is like a template of a starport, and then it just like, you don't have to like consistently make. No, it's it a story there. template. I'm I'm trying to find it. I think it would have a different. If I can find it, 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 it would have a section of bulleted lists and a section of tables, right? And then you, yeah. you just fill them in. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Okay, then you just kind of Control C, Control V to copy and paste stuff around and, and reformat it as you need it. Yeah. That makes I can't remember where the heck it was. Okay. It's, uh, it, it's inside Fantasy Grounds, uh, the, the forum, the Traveler forum. Okay. Yeah, we, at the end, we'll, we'll, we'll start sharing links that we all have that we, that we use so we, okay. that we, we could get those last 10 minutes in. Absolutely. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Yeah, there's so much. This, this, this could be a six-hour class, to be honest. Just chit-chat and talk Traveler. All right, so what I'm going to share now is the Traveler tools on the... Uh, AsiaWebsites.net. I'm going to post that in our in our Discord chat. All right. So what this can do for you a couple of things. What I use it for, I'll start. Um, I, my my guys, we play in the year 1105, the Golden Age. All right. I'm going to select. We're going to use that example of this jump. Right. So we're going to start in the Trojan Reach. And I don't think. I don't think that's Sindel subsector. Let me get out of this 3D because this is sub district two six eight, which means this is sort of marches. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So go to sector. Spinward marches. I know because oh, yeah, my right, game is right next door and glisten. Yeah. Marches adventure. Of course, it's spinward marches. So spinward marches, right? Subsector uh, that started in the Sword Worlds. It goes to 268. But we'll start there. The world is Flamerian. There we go. Don't need to fill any of this out. It's going to pull this information from me. But distance between origin and destination, how many jumps was that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is that right? 
All right. Oh, 10. 10 parsecs. It tells me right there. Ugh, that's going to be big. So do make this a 10. And it's going to count out so it'll know. And then I'm, I'm going to use the trade calculator using the Mongoose 2. All right. There's other methods. We could allow for illegal goods if we want. Up oh, depends on your, your players. All right. I'm going to generate trade info. All right. So now... Uh, the origin port of Flammarion, it gives me my UWP based right off the Traveler map, which probably is based off of um, the Traveler World link right here. Let's see if that, that works that way. Yeah, it does not. Um, anyway, there we go. The Traveler, oh, the wiki, that's it. So it's probably pulling right off of this, to be honest. But um, anyway. So the UWP is listed, and it's for this year. Uh, it gives me the star port info. My players, this is how they track their, their burden cost, the guy that does everything, right? So he's a, uh, a Starcraft, right, in the, uh, the, in the uh, with a Scott Courier, we'll say. So per day uh, uh, at high port is 500 credits. Uh, there's no wait time. They're going to get in right away. Refined fuel cost and unrefined fuel cost, uh, that is... Uh, not by the gallon, but by the um, ton. Ton, yeah, by our unit, by a ton. All right. So it gives you time to transit. So <laughs> this is super cool, kind of. If you're really nerding out sci-fi, you can't. Well, you can. Uh, we what what you do in Traveler is you you don't want to jump within a system's gravity well. So you have to get to a safe distance, and that's called the high guard, and that's why the high guard supplement has its name. So this gives you, uh, just by different directions, uh, how long it'll take to get there in-game. So uh, kind of interesting. And so this has the available trade goods on station if you use this tool. Instead of using freight material, you get this already rolled what's available. Uh, the, the, the DM uh, scorer and the broker, uh, all that stuff based on the, the prices. They have desired goods. Which is if you if you permalink this and save it, if they make a return trip, they could they could account for this and try to fill their holds, knowing they're going to come back to Flamarian. This is something they could look at, right? And because we did a ten parsec jump, this is going to give us other destinations, uh, and and passengers that want to go to those destinations. So let's see if um any of the planets that we know is on the way. Ask that there. This is our first one, so we know. These passengers are trying to go to this destination, right? They, we, uh, do they have desired goods? They may not, they got, yep. This is what they're, they're looking for. This is the multiple, the, the DM on the stuff that they want. So is that a bonus DM or a negative DM? Uh, this is, uh, the sale DM, this is the, I think it's just the target number. Dice small it's DM's dice modifier, so it's a positive. Okay. Yeah, but on the other charge, there were some negatives too. Depends on what the goods are. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, uh, and and if you had an illegal goods, there would be an illegal goods table for you. That's the kind of players you you have. And what you do is, if you want to share this in like Discord, you just hit the permalink, and it adds a little. Right, it, it just added to the end of the. Um, URL here so that way it, it they have the same result you have because otherwise if they do Flammarion on their own it's going to give them a different result because every every instance of this if it's not permalinked it, it refreshes these tables and randomizes is discord required to be the the voice channel if you're using uh fantasy grounds or can you use alternatives nope anything you want this does uh, between you and the players at your table I uh, I play with guys that use um Skype Okay. Yep. If you want to go back and use um, TeamSpeak and Zoom or Teams or Google Hangouts, uh, I, I, everything's viable. It's just you were mentioning that the permalink goes to the Discord. I was just wondering if I can grab it, and, you know, and drop it somewhere else. Oh yeah, uh, you could if I do do that as long as the permalink is on. So let me go ahead, make sure I did that. And 
I don't. Don't. Uh, well, we're gonna do one thing. I'm not sure that was it. I think I just copy. See if those are different. The other one of those. They look the same to me, so maybe that is the correct. I just want to see if it re if it rolled something different than me. So if, where do you put a, like, okay, so say it's like the, the Pirates of Drinax, right? When you get a mission, does that get set up under the quest tab? Or does that get set up under your storyline? That, that'll that probably be under the storyline. We could use the quests. Um, the, the problem, oh, these are from my session last night. So quests in Fantasy Grounds uh, is actually for awarding XP but for completing missions. So they functionally are nothing more than a placeholder. Just like a reminder of things to do, like if you like in a Grand Theft Auto sense, you know, go to see this guy and whatever before this date or whatever. Yeah, that's exactly. And you could do that, and then you can nest your quest into the story too, so you you have access to it as a ref where it makes sense for you. Or you could share the quest in the chat, and then the players could update their their notes right with the quest by dragging and dropping into their NPC notes. I'm confused. So what? quest is just like another notepad? No, no, no. I've shown you a link it. Uh, quest quests really aren't that functional in Traveler. Uh, they are they are for, for the core rules or the the core programming of, fa of fantasy rounds. It's to award experience, but you can use it as a placeholder uh, and and use it as a tool to nest into a story, or use it uh, whatever whatever method you want to use it as. Yeah, if you have patrons, the patron can say. Hey, can you do this thing? But you might meet a guy at a starport who gives you something to do too. If you accept that it. Yep. We're petitioning Mad Beer Man to rename that from Quest to something else, though. Yeah, and include uh, let you in, uh, put in parcels in there or something. Do we got enough time to go over that encounter system? I know there's only like two minutes left. I don't know if we missed it or. No, I, I took too much time on on trade, so I do I do apologize. I have time. I, I, I don't go to bed for another hour or so. Um, if you, anybody has to go, I totally understand. But I'll keep pushing through and show the encounter. That's what I wanted to show. And, and yeah, a let's do. Okay, so we got enc encounters and parcels left. There's also some good YouTube videos on, on encounters and that too. Yeah. Uh, but if, if you have to go, I totally understand. Um, I'm going to keep pushing though because I do, I do owe it to you, I feel. And we are still I, recording. I, 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 I will watch the recording afterwards, but thank you so much for all the info. Yeah, man. Take care, Toy. All right, so. When will you post the recording? You know? No, I don't. I got to edit it, and, I, and I'm not an editor, uh, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully by the end of next week. Okay, cool. Okay. So, um, we do have some NPCs I left in. Remember, we didn't unload that library. So in the, um, where are my NPCs? I'm losing my mind. Oh, they're at the bottom now. Wow. Okay. Totally different than a different game I was playing. So these NPCs are, are from stuff that I have loaded. Um, we're not going to get into the weeds on this. Uh, you can't create an NPC from scratch. If you do, um, you just got to know a lot of these keywords. Uh, this stuff, the, the characteristics you would know, um, I will share real quick. Because I did have this prep for this, um, Mad Beard Man has a forum thread that he just updated. It's an older older post from 2019, but it got updated in December of 2020. I'm gonna post this in chat, uh, and the reason being, it gives you the the different keyword types you have to use in um, in items and and the, like. For example, if you want to do armor resistances, this is the type, you, the exact word you got to use. But anyway, can you drag and drop stuff out of the out of the equipment catalogs like you do for your own character? Yeah. So I guess. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I can go to items, right? And I get out of uncategorized, but do all. I give him the accelerator rifle. There it goes to equipment. Now it's equipped, and you know I'm rolling. So yep, definitely can do that. Um, but I'm not going to show you how to make a new one from scratch. I would just recommend. Um, copying and pasting something if you have it. If you don't have this module, I'll sh share that link real quick. 
because I have that prepped, is these community expansions. I recommend downloading and using these and both these NPC modules. Hey, somebody here that uses this. All right, so um, 100%. Are you going to give us this. those links? Yep, come on. Oh, right the now. one. Okay, good. And these are modules. You have to load them in your modules folder. Uh, I can show you at the end of this session if you stick around where that's located. So there's that link. Highly encouraged just to get these NPC packs. And that way you could you could modify your NPCs. Or you could just, if you just drag and drop one of them, it's now uncategorized. And then you just start, that, that just did a copy and paste. And you can start changing the information as you need it. All right, so let's go ahead and make an encounter. Uh, in uh, Traveler, it is called Battles. I had, to, I had to think about it. So in a battle or an encounter, I'm going to edit list, create new add item, and it's a simple drag and drop. So what do we got here? We got any pirates? Pilots. Pirates. Nice. So I'm going to have a medic in this encounter, in this battle. All right, we have a seasoned marine in here. And we'll make it a... Uh, a veteran pilot. All right, say I want two seasoned marines. I wouldn't drag and drop a second seasoned marine. I would update it with a two. Now I have two pirates. All right, and this is, um, let me go to my story because we tie it all together. This will be on 1.4. Now I have this uh, is battle built. I could nest it into my Walston story. It's locked. Unlock it. Okay. So now I have the encounter. Uh, it didn't save the name because um, I had didn't I didn't lock my previous screen. So. Ah, jeez, Louise. The there best part I like about doing battles is you can preset the location for the uh, for the mobs or the NPCs mm -hmm. on your battle map and just drag the battle to your combat tracker and automatically places them. Yep, yep. I'm going to show that right now. So now we have the encounter. Um, mm, don't have a good map for you yet. Um, you guys do the space map. Yeah, you guys mind using a little theater of the mind? So this is. Oh, that's uh, fun. Yeah. So let me clear all tokens on here. Delete all tokens. Now this is the, right, this, oh, that's the image. This is my battles, right? I did open my Walston encounter. I could pre-place these baddies on the map. All right, so I could, I'm gonna close this. You can see they're placed by the check mark. Battle. What check mark, I missed it. Uh, this check mark right here. Oh, I see it, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I do need to nest this map though, because it doesn't make sense that it's that would be in a different part of the story. So this world is going to be here in part of this story. So I'll close this, and we're going to walk through this real quick. Let's go. Let's go to my images. We'll go to the, my jump route. All right, we can play it right out of here. Where is my? Oh, I didn't drop a Walston, so that won't work. All right, so we're going to go to my story. I'm going to go to Walston. All right, so I want to bring up my image. There's my map. All right. I'm going to open up my combat tracker so we can see this. I'm going to get rid of these two Walstons out of here by clearing all NPCs. I'm going to load the encounter because this is the part of the story where I'm reading my text and it says uh, there is an encounter with some pirates. Uh, to load them to my combat tracker now, I just hit add battle to combat tracker right and you can see they're where I pre-placed them on the map now cool right and then I could either show all or I could individually reveal them as necessary so, here you go Mr. Yellow you're taking cover behind this marble hmm. Right? And that's that's how you build that. Uh, the functionality for a spaceship battle encounter 
just like we did with these NPCs, it does not exist yet. I know that's yeah. what you were really asking for, um, but when it comes out, this is what is how you will do it. Can you play it through with the encounter of just have the guys, like one guy's the captain, one guy's the sensor operator, one guy's, and they just make their roles, or it doesn't even function that good? You, you uh, say that one more time, Russ? Do you know, like, like the players do it, like they have like a navigator or the guy doing, or operating the guns, like, can you set the encounter up to do it just like that, but with like the enemy? You, pro yeah, you probably could. The, the problem is I don't use that spaceship combat tracker like I should. Because then can anybody speak to doing that and setting their NPCs at their proper stations to make all those proper die rolls? Because I know the intent, and maybe maybe this is what you're getting at. Because if we have a PC spacecraft, I'm just this isn't part of this class. I'm going to show it. Uh, there is a crew section where you get, where you're going to be able to put everybody at their stations. I don't know if they're going to make that available for for the NPCs to have their spaceship with their stations. That, that'd be cool. Maybe be a good recommendation we make on the forums. Okay. But for now, the only way you could do that probably is just right here. You know, I'm literally typing it in the combat tracker where they're sitting. When you built that Walston and County, went through it really fast. Um, when you're done, if you can go back and just show me just a little slower <clears throat> how you did that. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right, so that's the encounter. And then we're going to build a parcel. Uh, this is going to be what what uh, is left behind, assuming uh, that the enemy is driven off or killed. So uh, we're going to use items. Go ahead and put this on this side. And then we're going to make a parcel. So let's see right here, parcels. All right, and this is going to be part of the Walston story. So I'm going to go ahead, add item. I'm going to call it 1.4. It's the loot, so these pirates have, you know, uh, 250,000 in credits. Awful lot. They have, one of them had an accelerator rifle, you know. And we can start just, you know, start loading it up. I'm just taking items, and I'm just dragging sure. and dropping them into my parcel. All right. Okay. This is just for, well, I'm not going to get out of in a backpack. I'm not going to get out of this too much. So this is the items that are left behind if... My travelers uh, successfully clear these pirates from the room or whatever, or the the, the grand hall with the big big uh, marble dome in the middle. So I have the loot. I'm gonna nest that in. I'm gonna put that in my in my story too, right? You know, I put some text and then I'd say if the the players are they find this item, this is where it's at. So now that loot is in the story. It's nested with the encounter, it's nested with the image, and it's now nested as a parcel and one story item. Lock that up. And what's fun with parcels in the 101 class, if you remember, we could go to the party sheet. I got a couple members in here. We go to inventory, and I could award this parcel. I don't even have to open it. I could just drag and drop it right here into the party sheet under parcel items right here. See? Right in this, this area, <coughs> drag and drop. The credits went over. All these these items went over. Uh, I know Oze is really wants that antique rifle, so he could go into the party sheet and grab it by taking that TAS symbol and dragging and dropping it into his um, inventory. I can split the credit loot. Uh, it, it'll divide evenly if I just hit this down arrow. The distribute assignments and credits. It'll do it. Uh, did you just transfer that to Oze, nope. or did he grab it? He grabbed it. He had agency on this. Oh, good. Okay, got it. Yep. If if uh, say say somebody's trading, say you could have that antique rifle. If I could have uh, your your auto pistol, go ahead and put your auto pistol in the party sheet, Jose. All right now, that player. I think we did that one. We did uh, character trade. Did something similar to that with the these skills. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was the one shot we did this. Oh, maybe it was. Yep. And you can see he lost his auto pistol, now it's available for the party. All right, I'm going to distribute the credit loot by hitting the down arrow. 
It got evenly distributed between the two players I had here in this party sheet. Again, that's from the DM101. All right. And, or I could just give this backpack to Mr. The Yellow, predictive text. And then I could hit this down arrow, and then he just got a backpack. Oh, okay. Right. So however you want to do that. Uh, the point the point of this, though, is to show how that goes in the, the story that we build. Nice. <clears throat> Now, one thing, we're pretty much, we're done except for one more step. And I'll stick around after because I know that was really fast for those two items. I could show you guys how to do it again. But uh, you can see now we've started building out our story. We've got a bunch of chapters and sub-chapters. If I open it up at 0, 0.0, it's going to go in the order, the alphanumeric order that we created. If I just start turning it like an uh, e-reader. Next page. Next page. Next page. Right? So I get all the way to the end in the appendix of the images. So hopefully I gave you guys a pretty good presentation on how we use Fantasy Grounds to import different images, uh, how to create encounters, uh, well battles, parcels, how to create stories using different text and uh, paragraph formatting. Uh, how to make a, your own rollable table. And you saw a little bit on how to make a custom item because we use the, um, the the alcohol as an example. Uh, we saw how to kind of integrate the web tools uh, in real time into a, a fantasy ground session. And that, oh, cool. God, that saying out loud is that is so much for just two hours. There's you said there was a way to, uh, for the, to like package it and finish it up? Yep, and that is my final step. So now that we're done, we want to reuse this this uh, this module, uh, or, or you know, we we maybe we built this for our buddy that's going to run the game, and uh, you're not selling this right because that's like your copyright infringement because the copy and paste you will not sell this if you take a PDF. But say you built it yourself and those were images that you owned or drew yourself, then you could you could use the TAS. Sure. If you want to learn about doing that, this Friday symposium is going to cover that. The, the Traveler Aid Society program on drive through RPG. All right, so to save your module for future use, you're going to go down in the bottom right in the library. All right, kind of makes sense because that's where we load modules. Well, I could export this module by clicking this export button. All right, we're going to give it a file name. It's the March's Adventure 2 Mission to Mithril. So I'll just call it uh, just M2. How did you how did how did you select uh, the uh, the thing you just built the story you just built I didn't see that let me close it you, you, all right you opened up the library yeah go to my library yep right I'm I, um, I'm gonna export this so that it is a file it's it doesn't it doesn't I, exist as a module until I export it I mean how does it no you just you just close this. So the, everything you just built right now is in story. Oh yeah, here. I, let me. Uh, you'll, it'll make sense. Give me one second. Just, just watch. Okay, then a, ask me again in sixty seconds. Okay. Okay. So export. So mission of mithril. I'm gonna give it uh, M two mission of mithril again. I think I could just uh, control A. Yeah. I just hit control A, control C, control V to copy it. And now I could select the data that we just built, uh, like like story right now it knows it's going to save that uh, I, I recommend just hit select all right and it's going to export everything even if if you didn't create anything custom all right so this is what's going to export everything that we made right all right if you had custom tokens that you used this is where you would put it um, that's that's a different class that'd be like more of the 103 kind of stuff when we make custom yeah. NPCs but so, so the category name is important because that's so that it shows up under its own category. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, I go. I'll go like MGT two, so that way I know what it is. And author, I mean, you could take that right if you take it from a PDF. Uh, I'm not going to put my name on it. I'm I'll give give the uh, the author uh, their due. So where is there it is. So they're going to be on the cover or the back page. So the author is Martin Autry. Autry. Oh. 
Yeah, dot rg. Yep. All right. So then I'm ready to save this. I'll go ahead and export it. All right. I got them. Whoop. Called up on the rolls. So module okay. file name contains invalid characters. So I can't use that colon. What's the read only or play mo player module? What's the difference between those two dots? Right. Um, so read only means that you will never be able to hit the unlock once you load it again. This won't be an option. It'll be read only. So there will no, no longer be any locked items. It's perma locked. Uh, player module, that would indicate. Um, like say I made a supplement for my adventure for my players that has alternate uh, careers, then I would uh, let me deselect all. I would just I would just just select careers and call it the play, player module, right? And I would name this player module as well. That way my players could load that when I share it to them in the library. But then I would create a separate module that contained everything, and that'd be the one I load as a DM. And I'll sh I could show you an example. So let me export this. It has player module clicked on it. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, okay, so X. All right, hopefully it wrote over. One doesn't really matter. It's just more for file. Uh, the reason I could share the player module, if it was a player module, by, by doing this number. And I'm going to load this up here in a second. So... What? When it exported successfully, does that to your hard drive? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's now locally on my computer. All right, uh, Mr. The Yellow, you're about to get booted. No! So I'm going to return to my my launcher. Uh, technically, a good rule, I should have just exited uh, completely. Because uh, what when you launch the launcher, then it reads your module folder. Man, I already got an update again. All right, so I'm going to go show you where the modules are now located. It's in up in here. You hit this folder. Okay. Right, and it takes you directly to the file path. You have your extensions folder, right? So if you download an extension, that's where you're going to put it. If you download a module off the internet, this is where you're going to put it, like the, the NPC pack. So it went in here now. It's called, uh, what do they call it, M2 Mission to Mithril. You can see that it's in here as a module. Okay. 